Hello, good day. Welcome back to Go on the Run. And today we're going to start off 2024 by addressing a user request. So user worldwild 6626, this is your video. Now, um, as you can see from the request, um, worldwide 6626 is asking, hey, can you show how to secure NATs with SSL or secure socket layer? And for some of you, if you're not sure what SSL is, it's essentially um, the older version of what is now called TLS, Transport Socket um, Layer Security, um, Transport Layers Security. Um, and I have a ton of videos, um, a section I did, I can't remember what it is, but I'll put a link up here right now. Um, you can go check that out. If you don't understand digital security, I cover it from like the very basic, very simple thing, and then just work my way up as I tend to do in most of my videos, starting with the very, very most simple assumptions and then show you exactly how it works, how you create digital certificates, how they're used by the client and server, why and all this other good stuff. So essentially, what we want to do now is have our NAT server be configured with a TLS certificate. We're going to jump in and start from a known good place. The known good place is going to be something we've done already with NATs, which is to have the NAT server running, write some Go code that's going to subscribe, write some Go code that's going to publish, and make sure that is working. And we're going to do it with user accounts. So we make sure that we can say, okay, we can at least secure our NATs with user authentication. Now we want to take it a step further to say not only a user account secure, but the actual connection between our client and server is secure. Now I could use username and password all I want, but if the connection is not secure, somebody could spy on that connection and see what my username and password is. So what Worldwide 6626 wants is not just, hey, I'm going to secure it with user and password, but I want to make sure the connection itself. And so that's where a socket layer security come in. All right. So if you aren't subscribed yet and you like the content, please make sure you subscribe. For those who are already subscribed, thank you so much. Thanks for your patience. Thanks for coming back. Happy New Year to you. I put out a video last week showing you what I plan to do for this year. So if you haven't seen that, check it out and let's jump in. Okay. So like I said, we're going to start from a known good place or a place where we can all agree we understand what's going on. And so first off, I'm in my terminal here and I'm in the... Um, episode 20 directory because we got up to 19 and that's when we were doing that last year and so we're going to pick up from there so i just copy um episode 19 directory to 20 and then i deleted a few things that we didn't need so let me just show you what we're going to start with so we have the nats configuration file this should look very familiar you've seen this before um this just says we're going to listen on all ports or interfaces on this server on port 4222, which is the default for NATS anyway. We're going to enable Jetstream. We'll take out the defaults. We're not going to configure anything. And then we have a system accounts. Um, we're not going to, in this video, talk about clustering. We covered that already, so there's no point in doing that, but I kept the system account. And then here, we're saying that, oh, here's our system account and who are uh, the users in our system account. But like I said, we're not going to use this part, but I left it. And then we have two other accounts, Team A, HR, uh, so, but a very secure A user one and the password A user one. Nobody's going to be able to guess that. I'm just joking. Do not use that. And then a second user, right? So very basic stuff. So that's our configuration or NATS configuration file. So we should be able to go over here. And if we check it out, yeah, that's our NATS config file right there. And we're going to do NATS server. We've done this before. And we run and we can see just three years on up and running. It sells our password, our plain text. We saw before how to use bcrypt um, to create encrypted password. So we're not going to talk about that. We're keeping this very simple. All right. So that's is up and running. Okay. Remember I said, we're going to start with a subscriber. What does our subscriber do? Well, here we know that the NAS.connect command returns an error and a connection. So we save that. And we also need to pass um, user information to connect. So the second parameter for the NAT connect command is this variadic parameter called options. And so we're going to pass in user information here as a NAT option. And that is the username and the password. And again, it's going to be that a user one and a user one password. If for whatever reason we can't connect to NAT, we just panic. Otherwise, we default closing when this, if this, when this program exits. Although, and then we move on to um, subscribing to a subject. So 
we use the NC that subscribe command to subscribe to the subject foo and we have a callback and our callback is just a function that takes a single parameter um, you know I pointed to Nat's message it doesn't return any value or anything so within there we just simply say if then we're call you know if them we got a message in this subject from this subject we're just going to print out the data for that message and that's it and then we just keep running that's our subscriber so let's get it running so um, run example one subscriber and there we go that's running and it should be connected and listening now we didn't see any error message we didn't put in any um, log message to say we're connected or anything but you know keeping it simple all right let's look at our publisher right we don't want to make this video too long so that's why i wrote some of this code before but this is stuff you already know so let's jump into the publisher publisher same thing with the connect and um deform or close and then we're going to keep our program running but the thing that we change really here is to say look let's grab the time let's format it in a message and then we publish that uh, message by casting it to a slice of bytes to our subject and remember we already have a subscription on that subject so we're going to publish or send a message to that subject and then we sleep for one second and then we repeat this forever now i threw this for loop into a go routine to kick off as a go routine and then sleep but really since this was a for loop i really didn't need to um put it in a go routine because it would just block the program here running I, um, in this loop anyway so our program would not exit but I did it this way again not a big deal do whatever you like but let's get this going so we're gonna get this publisher running and we should see here is the message and one it occurs every second okay so that's good so now we need to look at how do we make this connection secure now having user use password that's good but if the connection itself is not secure, then we could have a man in the middle attack where someone is spying on our connection, see what the username and password is, and they can just use their own application, client application, connect and look at you know the different um, topics and data we have um, passing through our network or, or rather our server uh, between the client and the server. So we don't want that. So what do we need to do? So let's go to the NAS documentation. Are we gonna go here real quick? And if we go down to security and we click on this section, it says TLS, right? TLS certificates. And you can see that it says the server can require TLS certificates from client when needed. You can use the certificate to validate the client certificate matches a known or trusted CA or a certificate authority. Uh, extract information from a certificate to provide authentication. The example in the following section, make use of the certificate you generated locally. So a self-signed certificate in other words, right? And so if you click here, um, they'll tell you how to generate the certificate locally. Let me click this, close this. But what we're going to do is use this application called make um, cert. So if I do mkcert that and go to dev, as you can see, make cert is a simple zero config tool to make locally trusted development certificate with any names you like. So if you're Mac, Linux, or Windows, you can easily install MakeCert. And once you do, it's going to make it super easy to create a self-signed certificate. Let's do that now. So we know what the configuration needs to look like. Is this cert file, the certificate um, file in PEM format? And my security videos cover all that. The key file, which is the key for this certificate, in also PEM format, which is a text format. We don't have a certificate authority, but we'll just, um, you know, not have to worry about that. So let's control C here. And assuming that you have make search install, which I already do, I'll do make search. And what I want to do is say the search file is going to be called NAST, that cert, that PEM, that's a certificate file. The key file, which contains the security key for encryption and decrypting the certificate, well, it's going to be called natserve-key.pem. And then these are the names that I want this certificate to be valid for for the servers. So basically, I'm saying that the service the server is going to be run on local host, this host name, and here are the IP addresses for IP version four and version IP version six. And you just run this command, and that's it. It tells you to create a new cert that's valid for these three names. You could put as many names as you like. If you know you have other external domain names and registered names, all that stuff. 
and then it says that it's created the certificate and then the key and it's valid for essentially two years so with that now if we go over here back to our vs code or whatever you can look at the certificate and here's in pem format it's just this text format and then the private key is also using the same sort of pem format all right so now the only thing we have to do now is go at our tls section here tls say that we have a cert file and again our source file is what that's that server.pm we have a key file and that's nats that server that key that pem and that's it that's all you need and so if we go back here and we do nats and we run our configuration notice i will tell us now that tls required for client connections well this is a little bit misleading because i'll show you why you notice how once my server come back up my um clients are still able to work so my subscriber is able to connect my publisher is able to publish and i can just stop this restart it and you'll see it connected so it connected to this very same server locally that i'm running and um, i can confirm that this is the only service because when i stop this notice there are no messages now so that is the only server i'm running and it's saying tls required for client connection so to understand what's going on let's do this let's go back to our code and this time instead of saying nats default url now notice the value for nats default url is just nats you know loopback address and then port 4222 so I'll type that explicitly and I'll do the same thing for our publisher and notice this doesn't change anything because that is the same exact value but there's a reason why I want to do this all right so if I go back here and I stop my subscriber I restart it um, I stop my publisher and restart it and sure it's going to work because again it must because the value is the same but I want to show you something. Let's now change this to TLS and here change this to TLS. All right. So if I control C here and I run this, it connects again. Control C, run this, and again, it connects and it works. But look what happened when I go to my configuration file and I comment out the TLS configuration. Now, if I go back here and control C, and then I do this and run, the server is up and running, but notice it does not say that TLS connection is required. And by the way, notice nothing's happening now that my server is back up. I don't get an error message, but look when I try to connect what happens. Now, it's a secure connection not available. So in the background, because we were in a part where we were sitting in that loop, NAS was trying to reconnect, but that wasn't, um, you know, nothing was happening there. So we can see that how we're failing to connect. And the same thing, if we try to connect with our publisher now, it's going to fail to connect because we're specifically saying that we want a secure connection and we don't have that configured. So it is in fact working what is happening is NAS is making it super easy for us when we put NAS as the protocol. If the connection is secure, the server requires secure connection, it negotiates that and connects securely. When we're explicit, we must ensure that the server is configured for secure connection. So here's my suggestion, and you'll see a team. I generally prefer to have code that is explicit. So if you're going to be writing a NATS code and you connect it to a server that's not connect secure, use NATS. If you're going to be writing a server that you intend that connection to be secure, use TLS. So it's clear to the person reviewing your code and clear to you the next time you come back to read this code that yes, I intend this to be secure. And not only that, but that the connection will fail if that server is not connect securely. So if you know that you have a server that's connect securely, and you use TLS and then you try to run your code and it doesn't connect, you get this error message, you're going to be like, ah, 
am I connecting to the right server or not? So always be explicit. So, okay, so now that we have that out of the way, we'll go back and we'll make sure that our server is configured to sec for secure connection. We'll stop it, rerun it. It's saying that our TLS requires for client connection. And we also configure our clients to say that you should be um, connect securely. So let me clear that up. And so they connect, no problem. And once again, they connect, no problem. Everybody is happy. I make it explicit in my code. Again, just a little thing to show you that how, um, you know, Nats is trying to do everything it can to help you out, but best to write clear code. So yes, when we had it as Nats only, we were connected securely. It's just Nats was sort of negotiating between the two. Like if it sees um, the service doesn't require a secure connection, it's still connected. If it does, then it does it behind the scene. I'm saying that you should write explicit code. Okay, so that's it. Thank you so much. I hope you learned something. If you're here, if you can make it to this part of the video, you like what you see and you're not subscribed, um, please consider becoming a subscriber by clicking that subscribe button. Um, if you don't mind um, hitting a like on the video, leave a comment, let me know what you like, what you don't like. For a returning subscriber, thank you so much. I appreciate it very much. I can't thank you enough. To my Patreon subscriber, Mikhail, thank you so much. I'm gonna keep thanking you in every video. If you wanna be included as a Patreon, please go to the Patreon page and you'll see all that here on the screen. And you have all these different ways you can support the channel. Um, until I see you in the next video, take care, be safe, bye.